I'm building a full bath and mud room right here. All right guys, so just in case you're new here, this is my house. So the whole structure is 50 feet by 70 feet. And uh, so 50 by 48 of that is the garage here. And that has 14 foot ceilings. And down there where the roof pitch changes, that is the living section. So that is 50 feet by 22 feet with an unfinished second floor. And now heading in this door, we will be in the garage. And like I said, this area is 50 by 48. 14 foot ceilings so that did give me just enough to be able to build a loft up there and most of the work on my channel does occur here but today we're going to be working on the living section and that is right through this door so here is the living space of my house so overall this is 50 by 22 so 1100 square feet on this floor and so if you've been on my channel for a while you would have seen the build of this bedroom I did this about a year ago, just a small extra guest bedroom with a closet there. And that closet actually connects over to under the stairs, which behind here, there is a hidden door right here. And you open that up and that is where my pressure tank and my water heater are. So when I first built the house, the only walls were uh, right here to create my master bedroom. And so this is the master currently with a bathroom and a walk-in closet. And so now that I have this guest room, it would be really nice to have a bathroom out here so that guests don't need to walk into my bedroom to use the bathroom. And also just anybody that's over at the house don't have to go through my bedroom. So this will be the area that we're working on. As you can see, when I built the house, I did plan on putting a bathroom here. So we already have the toilet drain here, and this is a shower drain. So it's great to have those already in the slab so I don't need to be breaking up any concrete and the sink drain can run through the wall since it is higher up and can tie into the existing drain system. And the other thing I've always wanted to add was a mudroom entranceway in this area. As you can see, this is where my washer and dryer are. So it would be really nice to have a separate area here to uh, hang coats, uh, maybe put a bench over here and also to be able to close off this area with a door so that when my washer and dryer are running, I'm not hearing it out here in the living room. So now we're gonna head over to the computer so I can show you the specific plans for what I'm doing. And here's my basic plan. So I'm going to be adding this wall here and then this wall, which will then basically create a hallway. And I'm going to be lining this wall up with the existing wall that is in my master bedroom. And that way I will have enough room for this door here to my master to swing out of the way and not be uh, in the way of going walking through this hallway. And yes, normally this door would open into the room, but because I have a closet here, I just preferred to have it opening out. And that should be fine with this hallway width. And so first here is the mud room. So we have a 36 inch door that is existing right here and then the washer dryer like I showed you. And then this is going to be a pocket door. That way I can keep it out of the way and it does. I don't have to worry about it swinging in or out into this hallway. Planning to have that be a solid slab door to help with sound insulation. And now moving over to the bathroom. So again, I'm gonna be creating this wall, this wall dividing the bathroom and the mud room. This kind of setup lends itself well to have this extra space here be a closet. So that's gonna be like a linen closet. Planning to put the door out here that's gonna be in the hallway so then it is easily accessible. Here I've got a 32 inch interior door opening into the bathroom and this is the existing spot for the toilet. And here is the shower and as you saw I already purchased the uh, tub and shower walls and so it's gonna be a standard 60 by 30. And for now I put in a 48 inch vanity. That will be the rough spot to be bringing my feed water lines. And then also my drain is going to have to be going through this wall and then into this wall to the existing drains. And luckily since I was the one that built this house, I do have great photos of where everything is in that existing wall. So this is the wall that separates the garage and then into the living space right where I'm gonna be putting the bathroom. So luckily I have my water feed lines right here that I can tee off of. 
And then also this is going to be the drain that I can uh, tee into for the sink drain. The one thing that we'll definitely need to move is this receptacle and then I will be bringing that over to the sink area as it traditionally is in a bathroom. So there it is, that is the basic plan. First off, I'm gonna be opening up this wall right here where I just showed you to make sure I uh, know where all of my access is for my feed lines and also my drain. And then once I have verified where everything is and where I'm going to tie into those, I can start building all of my walls. And once I have my walls up, it's going to be plumbing, start with the drains, and then the feed lines, and lastly will be electrical. I'm going to be adding some lights in the bathroom, maybe adding another light in the mudroom. But like I said, first up, let's tear into this wall, and I can also get the uh, final placement of the tub so I know where to build this separator wall.
All right guys, so I made a lot of progress on the framing here. As you saw, I started with the uh, two main walls that are coming out perpendicular to my existing wall. That would be this one, and then also the one here that separates the bathroom and the mudroom. And I started with those because I knew there was no doorways in them. They could be a pretty simple wall. Just went with the 16 inch on center studs. I did use uh, pressure treated wood for the floor because whenever you're going direct on concrete, it's best to do that because there's potential for moisture coming out of the concrete. So I built both of those on the floor and stood them up and they are really pretty much identical walls. They're the same length and uh, both 16 inch stud spacing. And I started with this wall here because what really set that location was gonna be the drain that is existing in the floor and then also the bathtub width. So I made sure I had it spaced out the correct amount. I gave myself like an extra quarter inch there so I will be able to shim the bathtub a little bit when I do go to secure it to the studs. So once I had that wall up, I could just double check my measurements that I'm gonna have a wide enough room here to have enough room next to the toilet, which will be here. And then also what was crucial was having enough room here on this wall so that I could have my vanity here because standard vanities are around 19 inches deep. So I had to make sure I had enough room here and then also enough room for the trim next to my door to fit the vanity in right where I wanted it. And then I also had to consider that I needed enough room here to fit my uh, 24 inch door for the linen closet. So once I had those two walls up, I got to work on framing this hallway wall. And this one was way more complicated because there were three doorways and it just made much more sense to just build this in place rather than trying to build it on the ground and stand it up. One, I really wouldn't have had room and it would be a little tougher to make sure I have everything in the right spot. So here what I have is a rough opening that is about 34 by 82 for my 32 by 80 door. Here it's about a 26 inch rough opening for the 24 inch door. And then this is a much larger opening and I had to refer to my uh, pocket door kit to make sure I had that rough opening correct. So that rough opening is something like 64 by 82 because you could imagine you have room for the door here and then you also need room in the wall for the door to slide away. So I will eventually install that door kit and it has basically a steel frame that will sit in this section. And yes, I do have a little bit more framing to do here to frame out the linen closet. So that's just gonna be an L there next to the bathtub and then here going into that wall. I have a also a small wall that's gonna go here. Since my bathtub does need to be pushed out from the wall a little bit, I will be framing a simple wall there and then a tiny portion there to get into my existing wall. So I am waiting to do those until I make sure I have the plumbing figured out for the bathtub and I know its final location and then it will be easy to frame both of those once the bathtub is set. And also, as you can see, I opened up this wall. It looks like a really big opening for what I need to do, but I thought I might as well just do a standard uh, four foot height here so I can just replace that with one sheet of drywall. And then I have plenty of room to be running my drains. And my initial thought on this big change to my living space, it's looking pretty good and it doesn't seem like it's making anything too tight in here. There seems to be plenty of room here to still have a table where I have it and uh, not too tight in my kitchen. And I kind of like that my bedroom wall here is set back more than this wall. Kind of opens up nice and then if you are out here in the living room, you can easily get into the bathroom straight through here. And the hallway is definitely not that narrow. It's gonna end up being about 41 inches wide when it's finished. So some standard hallways are more like 36. So that width seems to be really nice and definitely not too tight when you're walking through. And so the main focus today is going to be on plumbing. So the one thing that really controlled where I could place my walls was the location of this rough in for my shower bathtub drain. And so when I had the place built, I really had no idea what was gonna go here. So they just kind of roughed this in, in a location that would be a little bit better for a stand-up shower where the drain is in the middle of the shower. But since I wanna do a bathtub and shower combo, this actually ends up being pretty far from the wall. Normally you would want this right up against the wall so it lines up with your overflow here in the bathtub. So since this is so far out, I'm gonna to have to be doing a little bit of a unique setup. At least it's not like something you can just buy off the shelf. 
So luckily they did put some foam around uh, the rough in, so I have some flexibility. I can cut it lower. So I think I got all the parts I need to make that work, but the basic plan is to have that drain line up directly with the drain in the bottom of the bathtub. And that way it doesn't have to bring the bathtub too far out. It'll still be a, a little bit of a gap off that wall, which is okay because I kind of need room to uh, set back my uh, shower head rough in and also the uh, faucet rough in. So I think my first goal is going to be getting that drain figured out. And then from there, I have uh, where I'm gonna be tying in my drain for the sink, which is gonna be right here. So I'm basically gonna tee it off and then run it through this wall. This is a two by six wall. And then I'm gonna have to 90 it here, run it through this wall to roughly this location. And like I said, the uh, toilet drain rough in is already here. So there's really nothing more to do on that until I go to install the toilet. And once all the drains are figured out, I can focus on the feeds. The feeds are a little bit easier uh, because you have a lot more flexibility with what you can do. You don't have to worry about uh, dropping every foot or anything like that. And so this is my main feed for the house coming in. It actually goes under the floor here and my uh, water heater pressure tank are underneath the stairs over there. So that will be pretty easy. So these are two three quarter inch lines. So I'll tee off and then I will go to half inch lines. There's already the PEX tubing throughout the house, so I'll continue using the PEX and likely use the compression rings uh, with the tool to crimp them. And basically what I need will be the hot and cold for the shower valve. I will need just a cold for the toilet. And then of course both will have to run through this wall to the sink. So that is the basic plan. Let's get started. All right guys, so I wanted to quickly go over my uh, tub drain setup here because it is a little bit unique. In efforts to keep the tub as far as I can to that direction, to the wall, I want to line up my drain that is in the floor with the actual drain in the tub. So a lot of times you line that up with the overflow, but I'm gonna do that. It saves me about eight inches. So what I've got here is a straight one and a half inch tub flange. So that has a one and a half inch straight thread on it, not NPT thread. And that is what you need to thread your tub drain into. And so that was a little bit harder to find because normally these are a right angle, like I said, so it goes back to here. So I found that straight one. And then I got a uh, normal kit to take out the gaskets and then I could use the overflow as well. So then from that one and a half inch, I have a small adapter here to go to two. This is a two inch by two inch by inch and a half Y because the overflow is gonna be inch and a half. So then I just have some straight inch and a half, a 45 degree, 
and then an inch and a half up to the overflow flange. That came with the uh, normal kit and I can use that gasket and everything should work fine. So I dry fit everything here to make sure I had my lengths right. So now the hardest part is going to be getting this onto my existing drain in the floor. So what I did down here is I cut it down to what should be the perfect height so that when I put the Y onto that, it's gonna be at the right height for the tub. And so I think what I'll do is I'll take this assembly off the tub, put it down into the hole onto the drain and glue everything up but also quickly put the tub in place to make sure that I have the height correct and I'll preliminarily tighten that uh, tub drain onto this flange so that everything sets at the perfect height. And I'll also leave this on loose just to make sure that I have the Y at the correct angle to line up with the overflow.
All right guys, so real quick, before I close any of this up, I wanted to explain exactly what I did here. So here we have my main feeds from my house. So those are three quarter inch lines. So I basically teed off of those, cold here, hot here, and teed into a half inch line. So for the hot, I've got the half inch going straight over to a T here, and then continuing on to the shower valve. And the shower valve, I did use adapters because there were NPT fittings on the shower valve. So I went uh, straight to a half inch PEX to the half inch NPT. And that's the same adapter I used for the shower head and then also the cold side. Down here for the tub spout, I used a NPT to three quarter inch PEX. And I do have this coupler here just because all I could find at the store was a uh, male NPT. So I basically had to do a female to female coupler there. Then I've got a male half inch NPT to three quarter inch PEX here. So a lot of times you want to do this in copper and they do that because uh, you don't want to reduce the internal diameter because the internal diameter of a half inch PEX is less than a half inch copper. So that is the reason why I use three quarter inch here. And then I went straight down to the uh, three quarter inch drop ear to half inch uh, female NPT. That's where my tub spout will thread into. So I know there's a lot of different opinions on using PEX here, but I think because I use three quarter inch, I should be fine. And I've got three screws in that drop ear, so that should be really solid. And then here for the shower head, it is totally fine to use half inch PEX. So that same adapter, half inch PEX up to a drop ear and I just have that plugged right now along with the tub spout. So then basically the same thing for the cold, I come over to a T and then I continue on to go to the right side of the shower valve. So then from these T's, I brought the half inch line down. I use these uh, bend supports to try to minimize the amount of fittings I needed. So I brought both these horizontally and then the uh, bathroom feed T's off and straight down with another half inch line and I used a, a copper stub out. And then this corner was a little more difficult, but I did use one of those bend supports in that corner because it would have been really hard to crimp. And then I uh, continued the lines the whole way into this area for the sink feeds. And then down in here, you can see what I did with the drain. So I cut into this two inch vent and then I brought a, a two inch to one and a half inch T. I did have to use this rubber coupling because I was not able to move this uh, two inch line out of the way enough to use a uh, regular glue-in coupling. So then I brought this one and a half inch line, raising it basically quarter inch every foot. So that was easy because these are two foot on center, these studs here. So it was a half inch every stud. And then I brought it through, have a 90 in that corner, brought it the whole way over to where I think the center of my vanity will be. All right guys, so I've made a lot of progress. I'm gonna quickly go through everything that happened in this video. So as you saw, I did the drains first. So as I showed, I got the sink drain teed in behind this wall and I did that first so that the tub wouldn't be in the way. Finished out the sink drain the whole way to where the vanity is going to be. And you might be wondering about a vent. Yes, normally you would have a vent going uh, straight up here and then hooking into my other vent system but since this is just about an eight foot run to that vent, I'm going to get away with using a uh, check valve. Basically it's a uh, one way valve that will let air in right here. So I will tee that off under the vanity and that should be plenty sufficient for just that sink. And once I had that done, I shifted over to the tub drain and I showed you the uh, details on what I had to do there. Got that all figured out. 
and then I could get the tub screwed to the walls. So I created this wall here, and like I showed before, I had to step that out because of where my drain was. But that provided a nice little cavity to house my shower valve and my drop ear for my shower head and my tub spout. And at that point, I had it secured to this wall and this wall, and then I went ahead and framed out my linen closet here. I wanted to wait to just make sure I knew exactly where my tub was sitting so I could frame the linen closet along the tub there and then along this wall. So you can see it's a decent space, so it's a 24 inch door opening, uh, but inside it's a little bit wider than that and then depth is also right around 24 to 26 inches. That will be plenty to give me some nice storage. And I already showed you the details, I worked on the feed lines. And yes, I did already pressure test this. There's actually water running in these lines currently because I tied it into my existing lines here and here. And so everything is capped off so I could turn that water on. And I did not have any leaks. I did use the uh, go no-go gauge for all of the shark bite fittings. So I used the uh, crimps, the solid crimps, not the pinch clamps. I used the copper rings. And uh, yeah, you use that gauge to make sure that you are crimped enough. And so once I knew all my feed lines were good, I could go ahead with working on these shower walls. So as you saw, these actually came in four sections, basically this bottom half, the top half, and then each side here. You put the back wall on first, and then we put this right side wall on. And then for the left, we had to make sure we measured perfectly so we knew exactly where the hole was for the shower valve, and then also for the tub spout. And as you can see, we drilled and screwed that all around so it is now secured to the walls. And the last thing I just got done was I put my uh, pocket door kit together. I uh, had to assemble it kind of on the floor and then I got it into this space. It did go together pretty smoothly. I followed all of the directions to a T. And what happened was there was a big gap here between the track and the header. And that caused these holes here to be basically off this 2x4. They were right on the edge, so there was no way to easily screw that in uh, without changing the brackets. So what I did was I did shim up the uh, whole frame just a little bit with some regular wood shims. And that way I could pull this up a lot more so I could get all of those screws in to secure the frame to the header. So the only thing that will really do is pick my door up off the floor, but that's really probably not a bad thing because if I do end up ever putting flooring in here, it will give me a little bit more clearance and I might not need to change the door at all. So now you can see a little bit more clearly how this is gonna be. I have a solid slab door that's gonna go there and then be able to slide right out of the way. So now we're gonna move on to electrical. So we're gonna start right here because this was an existing outlet that was right here on the wall and obviously I don't wanna keep that right there next to the shower. It's also the perfect outlet to provide the feeds that I need for this bathroom. And since the builders built this knowing that I was gonna put a bathroom here, they really only have two outlets on this circuit currently. So I'm gonna be able to add more outlets and then use the power for the lights that I need. So what I'm gonna to try to do is disconnect that outlet, feed those wires back through the wall. They go through uh, some of these studs right here and then feed them into this wall. And then basically what I'll do is relocate that outlet around this area on the other side. And the reason for that is because I think I may end up moving my refrigerator to this wall instead of right here. Because right now you open the door kind of into the wall, that's not ideal. So I may move the fridge here and then add some more counter in the corner there. So I'm gonna add the outlet there and then I will continue it on to add the other outlet about here and that's gonna be on the inside here for the vanity and that will be a GFCI outlet. And this will be kind of the area that everything else will be happening because I will have the uh, light switches here for the bathroom and then on the other side of the wall I will have a light switch here. And as far as lighting goes, this light uh, which is existing is really not in a horrible spot but it's a lot better to have the lighting on the wall above the vanity. So I'm going to be removing that light and putting a light on the wall here. So I will need a box for that. And then right about this area is where I'm going to put a light and fan combo. And I did already purchase that. It's the same one I have in my other bathroom. So it looks like this. I like this style because it looks pretty much just like a can light, but it also has the fan. So 
the uh, bulb is kind of smaller and then it's open around it so that's where the fan pulls in the air the other nice thing about this it is very quiet so that's what's going to be going in above the shower and it will be wiring that fan and light separately so you can turn that light on without the fan then of course one more switch here for the vanity light so in total i'll have three switches here inside the bathroom and then outside the bathroom i will be putting a box in up here kind of centered in this hallway because i believe this hallway will get kind of dark now with all the walls up and i'll put a switch for that uh, right about in this area so that when you walk out of the laundry room you can hit that switch for a light here it'll also be nice to have a light so you can see in this linen closet and finally out here in the kitchen area i do want to change things up i was never a big fan of this light so i want to remove that light and then put two more can lights maybe somewhere around here and then over here a little bit so it's a little better distributed for the kitchen area and i'll probably use actually this light that's already in here for one of them i need to purchase one more so they will match these two here and i will put all of those on the same switch on a dimmer switch so those four lights will be kind of the uh, dining and kitchen area here and that switch will go on the wall right in this area so the obvious issue is that these five lights here are currently all wired together. So I will be able to leave these two wired together and then there will be a wire going over to that one that I will split to two additional lights. So that can all be wired together to that switch I just mentioned, but I will need to rewire the one over here in the laundry room. And luckily I believe this switch goes to this light first and then it goes on to the others. So I can basically disconnect the wire that continues on and this light should still work. And then it will just be a matter of getting a wire up through this wall into the ceiling and then over to connect to the first light here and then continue on to the next one and over to the other two. And I think I'm going to be doing as much as I can from below because I know I'll be doing obviously a lot of other drywall anyway. So I'll have to be filling holes where lights are coming out. So if I have to cut a little bit larger hole to be able to rewire this stuff, that's okay. And there is subfloor already upstairs. So that's gonna be a little bit more difficult to have to remove that. So I may just try to do everything from down here and then feeding wires uh, through the trusses because they go this direction. And then when they do get out to about this area, the subfloor ends and I can access the wires. So that's gonna be the basic plan for electrical. Now we can get started.
All right guys, so I got all of the electrical now in place. So as you saw, the first thing I worked on was rewiring this light here for the laundry room. And so I have that now only wired to this switch here, which is exactly what I want. Uh, so it's no longer wired to the other lights in the room. And as I suspected, luckily that switch went to this wire first and then it was in series uh, chained together with the rest of them. So all I had to do was go up in there and disconnect the rest of the chain. And then as for the rest of the lights that were connected to that one, uh, this one I totally got rid of because that was in the bathroom now and it is uh, not where I wanted a light. I wanted a light on the wall, not on the ceiling there. So I removed that one. And then the remaining three here, I was able to wire to this new switch, which is also a dimmer switch. So those three were already connected. So all I had to do was run this wire up and through the top plate. And then basically I ran it out the floor joist and then back in right to that one. That one was pretty close to the end of the subfloor upstairs. So it was pretty easy to get to. And I also replaced that light that was there with a recess light that matches the others. And so as far as the rest of the electrical, there was that outlet that was right in this area. So I didn't want it there. So I pulled it all back and then I had to cut a little access there so that I could run those wires. That was existing wiring and then over to this outlet. And so I put that outlet there just in case I want to move my refrigerator onto this wall. That will be a perfect spot for it. And then that is where I pulled the feed lines for the rest of my electrical. So that goes over here to this outlet first, which is a GFCI right there. Then I bring the feed over to that switch I was just referring to. And I didn't wire in the, the last part yet because I wanted that to be all live so I could use uh, those lights that are on the ceiling. So then it will go over to this box and then that is where I have my switches for the bathroom. So the first one here is gonna be the vanity. So that goes right to that box. And then the next two switches are gonna be the light and the fan that are over the shower. So that's right here. So I cut a hole right in the ceiling between these two floor joists where I wanted because uh, I knew this had to mount the whole way across. So I cut a decent sized hole so I had enough room. As you saw, I fed the duct through using two broomsticks that were taped together. And that's because there's a lot of that insulation up there and it's kind of tightly packed. So I needed something pretty strong to be able to push through that insulation. And to get the wiring to that fan, I brought it across here and then I actually went up right there because that is uh, right beside my subfloor upstairs so I could get to it and then I basically came back down through to get right to the fan. And by doing that I could avoid cutting up a lot more drywall in this room. And the last piece of this I got the feed moving on up and over the door that goes over to this switch and that is for this light and this is the new hall light. So I cut a decent sized hole because I had to uh, place that box there next to a joist. I did add that two by four just to space it out so it's in the middle of the hallway. And then I could reach over and drill through a floor joist that was right in that area. And I was able to feed the wire down through the top plate. So I didn't add all the switches yet because I knew I'd wanna take them back off before I put the drywall on. I did put uh, these outlets and switch here because I knew I wanted that live like I said. All right guys, so pretty simple. Today we're going to be working on hanging all the drywall here for my new bathroom and laundry room. And I have done some drywall before. I did this uh, whole bedroom here. It did end up coming out pretty good for my first time. So I have some experience. This uh, definitely has some more uh, little corners and stuff. So you can see here, we're coming out a little bit, then going back in around the shower, coming out again for the linen closet. It's a little bit more tightly uh, packed here, especially for doing inside the linen closet. Uh, we've got also the uh, slider door here, and they did provide the proper screws to screw into that metal. But otherwise, like this wall is very straightforward. I do know there's a few areas I need to add some support, uh, like in this inner corner, so that I have somewhere for the drywall to hang in the corners. So I'll kind of do that as I go, as I see necessary. But I think most of my corners are in pretty good shape. As you can see here, I did a California corner, so that's ready to go. 
And also for inside the bathroom, I will be using most likely green board. Uh, there's also a purple board you can use. I know that's what was used in my other bathroom. I think the purple is just a little bit more uh, mold and mildew resistant, but both are meant for uh, bathroom applications where you have moisture. But then for the outside and the laundry room, I can just use some regular half inch drywall and I'm planning to get it in four by eight sheets because most of my runs are definitely gonna be less than eight feet and that's the biggest I can fit in my trailer. So that's gonna be the basic plan, let's get started. All right guys, so drywall is finally finished. That was a lot of work. The uh, hanging went pretty smoothly, still kind of slow just because there is a, there was a lot of cutting, especially around all of the shower walls up top here and around just a lot of corners everywhere. So a lot of small pieces, also a lot of patching. So I had to patch around this light. There was a light there that I had to fill in 
And then I also uh, patched here where I added this light. There was a big rectangle. And then also uh, patching in my wall here where I cut out to access my electrical and my plumbing. So generally the hanging is pretty straightforward. You just wanna make sure everything is uh, kinda at the same level and you don't have any t big issues so that uh, when you go to finish you don't have problems. So once I had everything hung, we started doing all the mudding. Basically I put some mud down, put the tape down, put some mud on top of the tape so that it is uh, wet. If you keep it dry, it tends to peel off. So that's the first coat. Then I did a second coat over that to feather it out more. And then a final third coat that I wet the mud down more. It was pretty watery so that it was thin and so I could get a pretty nice finish on this. And I do have to sand now next, but I'm not gonna film that. It's gonna get a little bit dusty. I put it on uh, pretty thin and cleanly so I shouldn't have to sand too much. And one of the more unique areas was here around the shower. So basically I had to stop the drywall short of the shower about an inch and a half. So then I had this big gap here. I had to stop it there because I had the flange of the shower walls and that was the whole way around. So to fill that in, I used some L bead. Uh, so this is the very edge of that L bead and then it went this way. And I used that so that could hold the mud pretty nicely. I screwed that in. So that way I could mud it up flush with the rest of the drywall. And then I purposely left this gap here and that is the gap I will caulk. So once the caulk is in there, it should be a pretty clean finish. Obviously I do need to do some more sanding here because it was a little difficult to make all that perfectly smooth. And this time I did even drywall inside this closet. I didn't worry about doing uh, too much on the final coat. I will sand it a little bit but uh, I'll have shelving in here and you'll never really know that it's not a perfect finish job. So that's not too big of a deal for me, but generally I'm pretty happy with how it went. Uh, I will not be doing any mud for a very long time because this was so much more work than doing this bedroom here. Uh, the bedroom was just these two outside walls and then basically just two inside walls and I didn't do inside the closet in there. So this was, I don't know, three or four times the amount of sheets of drywall and also I used about that much more mud. I ended up using uh, one full five gallon bucket and then about another half of another one. So about seven or eight gallons of mud. So like I said, the next step is gonna be sanding, getting ready for the primer. Then I will be doing a primer on everything. I'm also putting a new coat on my ceiling here. You can kind of see how it's discolored at all the joints. That's because a couple years ago I had an issue with my wood stove that it was smoking out into the room and that discolored all those joints. So now is a good time to put a fresh coat on that ceiling. And you can see I started to tape off and I also have this entire uh, wall taped off because that is a fresh coat of paint from uh, just about a year ago when I built that bedroom. And now gets to be some of the more fun parts. I get to do all of the painting. We get to do flooring, pick out the vanity, get some final light fixtures in, and then we'll do doors. But first, like I said, we gotta do primer and paint. So it's going to be just a pure white uh, primer on everything first. And then I've got a lot of color swatches that I did not choose yet. I've got some blues and grays uh, to think about these walls and inside the bathroom and inside the laundry room. So primer and paint is up first, so let's get to it.
All right guys, so we are all finished up on this project. First up, we painted. I got this ceiling done here in the whole living room. You can no longer see those yellow joints, so I'm happy with that. Then of course I had to redo the hallway anyway, so I just carried it right over there, kept that white. Then for the outer walls here, I chose to match what I did on the outside of the bedroom. I kind of like the way that looks with the uh, wood trim and goes pretty good with this uh, concrete floor as well. So that is what I would call a medium gray. Definitely not as dark as my uh, kitchen wall over there. So then inside the bathroom and the laundry room, I kept it in the same family of gray, but I went one shade lighter because both these rooms were uh, kind of small. I didn't want them to get too dark. So you can kind of tell that's one shade lighter than what is on the outside here. Next up, I went ahead with flooring. So this was the first time I ever did flooring. This is a LVP luxury vinyl plank flooring that snaps together. It did go together really smooth because of how small these rooms are. There's only room for like one full plank here and then you have to cut. And then I also staggered the joints. So it's just a lot of cutting for these rooms. If you had a larger room, it would seem to go a little quicker. But overall, very pleased with how that came out in both rooms. Kind of like a gray tone with a little bit of brown tone uh, wood look. And then I was able to find these transition strips. They were not even sold by the same company, but they did match pretty well. So I did those same strips at both locations to transition to the concrete. And once the flooring was done, I got to work on the uh, shower fixtures in here. They went on pretty smoothly. As you saw, I had to put that piece of uh, brass pipe on for the tub spout. You have to get that kind of the exact right length so that when you then thread the spout on, it sits correctly and seals up. And then pretty straightforward installing the uh, handle here on the valve. You just follow the uh, manufacturer instructions and then basically just screw on the shower head. So that all works great. And then I did have to do a good bit of caulking here around the shower. As you saw in the previous video, I left a gap here for caulk. I had that L bead here and then I had to feather it out with my drywall. So that is what I filled in with caulk. It did end up looking uh, pretty clean. I'm pretty happy with how that was. Had to go then the whole way around the top here as well. And then these shower walls were actually four separate pieces. So they want you to caulk all of those seams. So down every corner and then where it meets the tub as well. And then here where the flooring met the tub, I used a piece of quarter round that is PVC and I caulked that to the tub. Next up, I got the doors hung. I did it in the same way that I did the other doors when I did the bedroom. So basically I hang the uh, hinge side first without the door installed and then I put the door on to secure the rest of the frame. And I do use a combination of construction screws and uh, finish nails to hang the doors just to give me a nice uh, solid connection there. And then for the pocket door, I didn't really show this, but pretty basic as you uh, hang the door at the top here, you basically install some brackets on the top of the door that then latch into bolts that hang down from the track. So that went in pretty smoothly. It's a little tight to get it in there, uh, especially once you have the trim on, but I was able to do it. And so that slides nicely and works exactly how I wanted it to. And next I got the light fixtures hung. So I found this fixture that I liked. It has actually three uh, of the, uh, I guess they're kind of like candle bulbs in there. And uh, I like the way that one looked for this hallway and it is on this uh, dimmer switch. So I can dim it down. That's kind of cool at night. Gives a cool effect on the ceiling. And then in here above the vanity, I installed a three bulb fixture that went in pretty smoothly. And I use those uh, Edison bulbs because I think they look kind of cool. I did go down to 40 watt for these because when I had 360s in here, it was just too bright. And here is the vanity that I installed. So it's a 36 inch vanity, pretty standard. Uh, so it was off the shelf. I got it in the store and it did come with a top, but the, as you saw, the top was not installed. So I had to install that. And you could see in the video before I installed this, I did cut out a little bit of a of the drywall in that section. Since the corner was built up a little bit from the mud, I couldn't get the top to sit nicely that I would have a nice edge to caulk. So I basically cut it out so that I could get it all flush up against the wall and then flush up against the back wall so that then I could have this nice edge to caulk. 
So I actually caulked the whole way down the side, across the top, and I could install a uh, couple inch uh, backsplash there, but for now, I'm just leaving it. I like the way it looks like this. Also got my fixtures installed here. That's pretty straightforward, just following the instructions. Underneath here, I do have, that is the vent right there. Uh, so it was a little tight here with the drawers and where the plumbing was, but uh, I got it figured out and it drains perfectly. So once I had all that done, I could get to work on the trim. There was a good bit of trim in this project. And for the bathroom, I ended up just painting the trim white to just try something different uh, than the rest of the house. And I do like the way that looks, especially against that gray and the flooring. So we've got white all in the bathroom. Around the door, I used a little narrower trim. And that's because back behind here, I knew I wouldn't have enough room for a full piece. So I just kept it uh, narrow the whole way around and it looks pretty clean. And then for outside, to match the rest of the house out here, I did the uh, stained and polyurethane trim. So like I said, there was a lot because of all these doorways and there ends up being a lot of wood in this hallway, but I do like the way that looks. And I did take the time to actually go around and fill all the holes with the uh, paint matched uh, putty that Minwax sells. So that looks a lot cleaner because you don't see those little nail holes and from where you cut, you can clean up sections that maybe tore off where you cut for a really clean finish. And then around here at the pocket door, this was a more unique setup because I needed obviously a much wider piece here. And then these ones were actually much narrower. So there's a narrow one here and here. And it's not a standard size, so I actually had to rip those down on a table saw. And that goes the same for the pieces up top here too. And once I had all the trim finished up, I could install the toilet. I waited to do that because I knew trim had to go behind it. So I did that as a last thing. That went in very smoothly, first toilet I ever installed. I did get the higher one because it's a little bit more comfortable and also the ovalized for the same reason. And then some of the finishing touches in here, obviously got a, a toilet paper holder. I went with kind of black accents with the uh, fixtures and the pulls on the cabinets. Found this mirror that has a nice black frame on it. I got the matching towel rack holder and just installed these hexagonal shelves above the toilet. That wall was just kind of empty without anything on it. So I got some shelves in there. I installed this uh, curved curtain rod because this is a, this is a standard 30 inch width and without a curved curtain rod, it gets to be pretty narrow in there, especially if your uh, shower curtain comes in on you at all. So that makes it pretty nice to have a lot more space in there. I think this one gives you an extra 10 inches or something like that. So yeah, it's not bad at all when you're showering inside. And then here in the linen closet, I just installed some shelves. So I got these uh, standard brackets that you can buy. You can get those in, in different lengths. So up here at the top, I actually went with a narrower shelf and that's so that I could fit something up in because I have actually a lot of room up there because of how high my ceilings are. So I have a little narrower one on the top but the rest are larger. Left a big space here at the bottom for storage. I did leave some space here too so that I could store like brooms and things in this area. And so these shelves are actually just some scrap half inch plywood I had that I painted on all sides with some white paint. But yeah, this ended up being a lot of space in here. I'm glad I decided to make this a linen closet. And then over here in the laundry, I didn't do anything yet, but I may put a bench in this area. And then I can also, of course, put some hooks on the wall for some coats. Now this project took right around three months to complete, and that's doing mostly only on nights and weekends. So it did take a lot longer than the bedroom here. The bedroom probably took about a month. And then in total, I think I spent right around $6,000. Some of that was buying tools because I never did plumbing before. I never did flooring before. So I did have to buy a few tools as well. So if you're looking at just materials, it was probably a little closer to 5,500. And in comparison, this bedroom was more like 1,500. And you know, I didn't do any plumbing and only a little bit electrical in the bedroom. So of course there was all the plumbing and then buying all of the uh, fixtures, buying the bathtub, the walls, the toilet, uh, vanities are not cheap. Obviously the flooring alone was something like five or 600, 
Um, so just a lot more cost involved doing a bathroom. And of course this was also a lot larger. This is about a 14 and a half foot wall here by eight feet this way. So for reference, both rooms are roughly eight feet by eight feet. All in all, I'm extremely pleased with how everything came out. Uh, I would say the most challenging part was doing all of this drywall. Just so many corners and smaller pieces in comparison to my last project. So doing all of the mud took so long. I did really enjoy doing all the framing. That's always a fun part for me because you can get to see what it's going to look like and get, it seems like you get a lot done in a short period of time in comparison to when you're doing the electrical and plumbing. It kind of just takes a long time to get that stuff done. And then also it was really fun to do all of the finishing, picking out all the fixtures and uh, the flooring and just really making it look good right at the end. And now just to give you guys a little better feel for what the new setup is like, here I'm going to be entering in from the garage and we will be entering into now the new laundry and mud room. And then here I've got the uh, pocket door that I can close when I have the washer or dryer running to keep the noise from the living space. And then if you come in here, my original bedroom is behind this door and I did set this wall in such a way that that door can kind of sit pretty far over so it's out of the way when you walk through here. And this is the bedroom that I built last year on my channel. And so here is the new hallway if you're coming in from my bedroom. This light switch controls the new hall light that is centered over the linen closet. I've got the linen closet right here. And then here is the new bathroom. And then looking out into the rest of my living space, this wall is back further than this wall. So that kind of provides this space here that I could put a dining table in the middle of if I had a lot of people over and needed the space. But for now I have my dining table here against the couch. And then here is the new walls. So you can kind of see, get a feel for this space. It did not make it feel any smaller. I think it kind of made it a little bit more cozy, less like a huge open room that echoed. Now I just have basically my kitchen and living combo here and like i said eventually i think i'm going to move my refrigerator onto this wall here and then add some more cabinets in this corner which will give me a little more prep space and cabinet space but for now the fridge does function fine in this area of course i could not fit any larger of a fridge right there and now walking out into my living room you can get a feel for the new space now that I have the additional bathroom and laundry room. All right, so that's gonna be it for this project. Uh, this was a lot of work, but I think it's definitely worth it. Now I have a full dedicated bathroom for guests, and I also have my laundry separated to isolate the noise, and this will be a good area for uh, hanging coats and keeping dirt in there. So definitely let me know what you guys think and let me know what you want to see next on the channel.